Hello and welcome to the first in the Spotlight series of videos, where I'll be taking a quick look at a key issue facing Australia today. Go back a decade or two and if you wanted to buy an airline ticket in Australia, you had to choose between Qantas or Ansett, two Australian airlines that were basically clones of each other. That's because back then, international competition was not allowed. It was Australian Airlines only. Fast forward to today, and there's an alphabet soup of international carriers all competing to win your dollars. There are low-cost carriers, full-service airlines, and everything in between. There are even airlines that don't offer a meal. Perfect for travellers on a diet. Air travel has never been cheaper, and that's got to be a good thing, right? Maybe. Maybe not. You see, the change from an Australian Airlines-only policy to an open skies policy has come at a high price. ANSET were wiped from the face of the earth, leaving 16,000 people jobless. And Qantas, while still profitable overall, are losing money hand over fist in the international market. Why is it so? Why can't an Australian international airline be as profitable as, say, Emirates or Etihad? Why can't Qantas compete in an open international marketplace? Some people would have you believe that that's because Qantas management are wasteful, stupid and inept. And whilst that's a possibility we can't rule out, there are other factors in play. For example, many of Qantas' international competitors enjoy some level of government or taxpayer support in their own domestic market, whether that take the form of direct subsidies or tax breaks or limitations on international competition coming through their own domestic hub. Add to that the fact that these competitors have access to cheap labour, meaning cheap cabin crews, cheap maintenance, cheap baggage handling, cheap everything. And add to that the fact that many competitors have hubs set up in locations that attract a lot of through traffic. No one's going to fly from Beijing to Los Angeles via Sydney, or Tokyo to London via Alice Springs. We simply don't get through traffic with the associated bums in seats and economies of scale that that brings. Add to that the fact that Qantas operates a very high safety standards, invest heavily in training, and despite some highly publicised but ultimately minor incidents in the last few years, has one of the best safety records in the history of aviation. Put it all together, and you'll start to see that the problem isn't just some management ineptitude or shareholder greed. The simple fact is that Qantas are not competing on a level playing field. They're faced by competitors from all over the world who have advantages of one kind or another that allow them to undercut our local industry. Making matters worse, Australians, like everyone else, are very price sensitive. And who can blame them? Everyone's under financial pressure these days, and whether you're travelling for business or pleasure, a cheap ticket's a cheap ticket, right? International competition has been great for consumers, but it's forced the Australian airline industry into a struggle for survival on an uneven battleground. Given that this is the case, and given that ANSET collapsed so soon after the introduction of the Open Skies policy, isn't the real question we should be asking, how the heck have Qantas survived this long? Or a better question, if even Australians are beginning to abandon Qantas in favour of cheaper international competitors, how much longer can they survive? For now the news is good. The Jetstar experiment has been a lucrative one. Small regional divisions of the business continue to be strong and the Qantas group are on track to post another solid profit this year. But the fact remains that Qantas International are losing money. And unless they can become competitive with the international full-service airline industry, they're on track to suffer the same fate as ANSET. And given the disadvantages they face, this means Qantas International will have to become one of the smartest and most efficient international carriers in the world in order to survive. Efficiency is king. I don't want Qantas to go the way of ANSET, but I'm making this video because I'm worried that sooner or later it will. Why do I think that? Because as you may have seen on the news, Qantas's ability to continue competing internationally is being undermined as we speak by their own workers' unions. The pilots' union are demanding a raft of changes that will make it harder for Qantas to be competitive. Example? Well, it's a bit complicated, but one of the demands essentially boils down to being able to fly Jetstar flights on Qantas salaries. Now, I have nothing against unions in principle, but you have to wonder, have these guys never heard the saying, don't bite the hand that feeds you? Jetstar are the main reason why the Qantas Group are still profitable right now. And the whole point of competing as a low-cost carrier such as Jetstar is that you keep your costs low. Qantas International are unprofitable partly because their costs are so high. So if these unions force Jetstar to pay the same high costs as Qantas International, well, won't Jetstar just become unprofitable too? Qantas are all that is left of Australia's international full-service airline industry, and the international division is losing money. 
unless they become competitive and fast, then management are either going to shift jobs offshore or shut the division down. Either way, it's bad news for Australian workers. What worries me the most is that these unions might actually get what they want and then discover too late that it's the worst thing they ever did. Qantas can continue to pay its high prices for its engineers, pilots, support staff and crew, or Qantas can compete against the international competition, but it cannot do both. Something's got to give. Either Qantas reduce its cost of doing business through superb efficiency, or it needs some kind of regulated protection against the international competition. If these unions are not willing to help Qantas cut costs and compete, then they should instead make a beeline for the government's front doorstep. Demand an end to the open skies era and a return of local industry protection. Because without protection from international competition, Qantas must cut costs in order to survive. And if these unions get what they want without protection in place, then Qantas International will either have to move offshore or suffer the same fate as ANSET. Either way, Australia loses. If the Australian government doesn't have a change of heart regarding the open skies policy, then Qantas will have to continue competing internationally. To do that, they can either create a superb local operation that's better and more efficient than anywhere else in the world, or they can shift their operations offshore to get the cheap labour. If the unions do not help achieve the former, I'm worried they're going to guarantee the latter. I don't want that to happen. Do you? My name's Topher, and you've been watching Topher's Spotlight.